Number 69. 69. O little town of Bethlehem, number 64.
58, number 58, infant holy, infant lowly. Number 50, 55, verse 1. Welcome on a very chilly Sunday morning, and we thank Reverend Bright for bringing us the gift of snow this morning. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. I hope the drive down wasn't too hectic. This is the third Sunday in Advent for the year 2022. But do you remember the two themes for the candles that were lit two weeks previous to this. On the 27th of November, we lit the first candle and it was the candle for peace. That's right, it was peace. And for the second week, it was the candle of now you can say hope. Oh, no, absolutely. Good. Today we light the third candle, and we will do that in a few moments. Several reminders. First of all, coffee hour will take place this morning in the Heritage Room. This is our second week in a row, 
and I hope that you enjoyed it last week, and if you don't want to go out and shovel snow, come for a coffee. Excellent. Um, second reminder, there are still many 2,023 envelope boxes waiting to be picked up in the narthex. Please note, we do not deliver to your home by Amazon, Purolator, or Knox Express. So please pick up those envelope boxes on your way out today. They won't last long. No, there's only one for you, so that's fine. Just one for you, make sure you pick those things up. This morning, our Christian Education Change for Change Advent Mission Project needs our help. This morning when you walked in, you were given a coin. It was a quarter. What I would like you to do with that quarter is take the quarter at the time of the offering and put it on the plate. But that coin will be very lonesome if it doesn't have a partner. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is to reach into your pocket or your purse and at the time you put the quarter in, put another coin in. Preferably a little larger coin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the way in which we can support our project. In addition to that, as you well know, that a couple of weeks ago, there was a whole insert that outlined the project, and on the back of that had a great number of things that you could purchase and you could provide. Those included canvases, coloring books, gel pens, stickers, and the list goes on and on. I will have that list up in the narthex if you've forgotten. But those items can be picked up and brought to church and those will be available for your, for your donations uh, right through until next Sunday. Jane, did I forget anything? Perfect, okay. In your bulletins today, you may notice a little bit of a change. The change is White Gift Sundays with an S on the end. And the reason for that is if we made it only one week, we would only be asking for your donations that go towards supporting AXA on a single Sunday. That's not true. We are able to take your support throughout all of December. And so White Gift Sundays is appropriate. This Sunday and next Sunday, make sure that you have put those donations for AXA on the plate. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a family that is extremely talented in many ways. I'd like to introduce the Lee family, Mike and Lucy, Angela and Sarah, who are going to light our Advent candles this week. Souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. We come today with eager hope, awaiting God's new re revelation. The Mighty One has done great things. God's mercy covers generations. We come today with ready peace, trusting with anticipation.
as we come to light the candles and sing songs and listen to message, today we pray for the people in and around our lives. We are reminded once again today's theme, today's title, which is joy. At this very challenging time uh, in today's world, in our family, in our relationship, church family, we pray and remember those of us who have lost joy, who have lost smile, who have lost happiness. May God's joy be found in their lives. Amen. Our opening carol is from Voice United, hymn number 62, Once in Royal David City. Voice United, 62. Let us continue in the opening prayer, <coughs> followed by the Lord's Prayer. We will sing the Lord's Prayer today. Let us pray. Mary, according to the Gospel of Luke, Mary said, I'm bursting with good news. I am dancing the song of my Savior God. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God, whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. God's mercy flows in wave after wave. Let us all join with Mary, with her joy, in dancing the song of our Savior God.
Here is the assurance of God's grace. The ancient promises of God are fulfilled. God does not forget us. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. Let our souls magnify our Lord. Rejoice in God. next carol is from More Voices, 134. There was Child in Galilee, More Voices, 134. Some of our older youth today, which is true. So we have 
a choice, my friends. Come and we'll have our, our time together, but we can absolutely still go down together or we can stay up in the service. Okay. Oh, look at that. Charlotte and Victoria are here too. Awesome. Hi, friends. Good to see you. Yes, first Sunday we don't have some of our little ones. That's okay. We're going to all pretend we're going to be little ones today. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. So this morning, I wanted to know what brings you joy? What brings you happiness? When do you feel happy? When do you feel joy? Is it big occasions, small occasions? When do you feel joy? When do you feel happiness? Food. Ah, oh, right after my own heart. Absolutely. Food. <laughs> the way to the heart. 100%. Anything else? When else do we feel happiness and joy? Oh, this shouldn't be this hard, right? But is it? Maybe it is. Well, here are a few things that bring me some joy. Oh, getting home after a long day and just putting on the house coat or, you know, the pajamas, taking off the shoes, absolutely putting on, and it has to be the themed ones now, right? You have to have the themed good slippers. Let me tell you the joy that I'm feeling right now, how good this feels. And of course, you can't be without the cup of joe. Now mind you, I promise you I don't drink this much coffee every day, but I wanted you all to see. Coffee brings me joy, it does. And it's the simple things, right? The simple things of a good cup of coffee the warmth of a house coat or your favorite slippers, those simple things. And I think that's what we need to remember every day. And especially as Pastor Bright said, you know, in these times, it's hard to think of the joy. And sometimes we feel guilty for even feeling joy and feeling happiness. You know, but God reminds us daily about the simple joys. The simple joy of being with your family, being with your friends, having a good meal together, spending time with your church family, a lot of simple joys. And every day, I bet if you sat and thought about it, you'd lose count of how many simple joys we have in our lives. You know, from the animals that we love, um, to the books that we read, to the music that we sing, all of those things. And if we really stop and think about it as Christians, that's what God has given us, that simple joy. And that simple joy is what carries us and lifts us through the hard times, through the times that are difficult and challenging, isolating and lonely, are those simple joys. And God reminds us that now at Christmas, that simple birth of Jesus, it wasn't brought in a huge, magnificent way with church bells ringing and, and a big parade. It was a simple birth in a manger by Mary and Joseph. And that is something that absolutely would have been hard for them. I'm sure they felt scared. I'm sure they were anxious. All of those things throughout the story. But that's part of the story. To have those feelings is how we can really experience joy. We can't really know joy if we don't know how, what it's like to be uncomfortable and to be anxious and to be upset. So I want to challenge us today as we go ahead and we head into this next week to think of some of your simple joys. Find those simple joys. We don't need to wait for the big stuff. The big stuff is wonderful, absolutely. But the simple joys are what carries us through every day. But the best simple joy of all is your relationship with God and with Jesus. You know, spending time, just a couple minutes a day even, talking and being silent, listening to God, singing with God, praying with God. And maybe if that's something that is difficult to do on your own, spend it with friends, spend it with family, because that's what God does every time when he brings us together. So let's say a prayer, my friends, and thank God for the simple joys that we have. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the beauty of snow. We thank you for Jesus, and that you remind us with his birth, of how much you love us. Help us to remember the simple joys in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you guys want to come downstairs?
Good morning. I will be reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. This is Mary's song of praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and his holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his, with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Thanks be to God. Sometimes people leave their personal notes uh, in my office. Uh, most of them good. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, but 
Somebody slipped a note that reads, Dear Pastor, my friend was suffering through brain cancer and the treatments. But the faith my friend has was such that the nurse in the hospital on duty wrote a critical moment, critical comment on the chart that says, Mr. X is inappropriately joyful. <laughs> Since I read this note, it has become one of my goals to be inappropriately joyful. I wonder what that means or how you do that, inappropriately joyful. How could joy possibly accompany such dreadful suffering? Brain cancer, and chemos, but at the same time, joyful? This morning, we'll do some language study 101 with me. The English word happiness. The word happiness. The word happiness is rooted in the Latin language hap, H-A-P which is chance, literally, like perhaps, mishap, or happen, happenstance, something that occurs, something that just happened in our lives. So we tend to think of happiness, the pursuit of happiness is linked with health, with success, or with possessions, spontaneous response to temporary pleasure, something that just happened. And then we think we are happy. The things, if they are going well, that makes us feel somehow inside that all is well with the world and we are okay. By contrast, joy Joy is different, and we, the key is to identify the difference between joy and happiness, to be inappropriately joyful. By contrast, joy is not determined by a sense of well-being, because joy may be experienced when things are ill with us facing illness, dealing with difficult times, when circumstances are not so great. This allows us to make the distinction which we must make between happiness and joy. Happiness depends upon what happens, something that happens. But joy is distinguishable from that in as much as it, ha- it shapes our attitude to our surroundings. My soul magnifies the Lord. This is the first line according to Mary's song in Luke's Gospel. One of the beginnings in the original Christmas story. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the loneliness of the servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. What a beautiful song this is. Mary is inappropriately joyful. In verse 39, Just prior to this song, Mary went with haste to her cousin's place, Elizabeth's place. She just heard the good news. The aged cousin, Elizabeth, is is pregnant. You will conceive in your womb and bear a child and you will name the child. Some reason, for some reason, before Jesus' birth story, the Bible, the Bible, 
displays someone else's pregnancy and giving birth story just prior to Mary's story. But can you find Mary's haste here? Is this positive, hurrying things up? But if you look carefully here, can you find Mary's haste here, a human display of the fight or flight response? Our reaction when faced with perceived threat, difficulty. After all, for Mary, it was an overwhelming encounter. Mary just saw and heard the angel, you are going to have a child, not knowing a man. What about the aftermath? This pregnancy out of wedlock would have been a cause for her to be put to death, according to their custom. It is possible that Mary's flight with haste is urged on by survival instinct. She's afraid. Have you ever made a heartbreak decision to flee your comfort zone because of fear? It's not difficult to see when people flee, when people move to a different place because of fear. How many times we watch the news about what happened at the border between USA and other country? Refugees trying to escape, but they are met with tear gas and rubber bullets. How about people who are afraid of losing their loved one because of what they thought a wrong diagnosis from a doctor? and seeking out a different doctor. Mary just visited her cousin Elizabeth because she knew Elizabeth was aged but pregnant. And the Bible says when she did that, the baby inside the cousin's womb just happened to be John the Baptist leaped for joy in that womb. And what did she say? Elizabeth said to Mary, who is afraid, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken. There was a song from Elizabeth. It's like a chain reaction. Mary herself didn't see what was going to happen to her. It is not possible. And it wasn't about perception, but she believed, and in so believing, Mary is now inappropriately joyful. In that believing, she is joyful. It is a response to believing the good news. Believing the good news. David Brooks, uh, one of the writers in today's world, in the book Road to Character, describes such joy as the joy of people who have their values in deep harmony with their behavior. It's that quiet sense of gratitude and tranquility that comes as a byproduct of successful moral struggle. It's not about something that is going to happen. No, it is a decision to be joyful. This joy is unique because at its heart is the joy that, that is in line with their behavior. It's not simply the sense of well-being. Many are unhappy today's world. Where then is joy to be found? Where is joy to be found? And here's the key. When you wake up in the morning, 
You cannot wait to see what kind of day you're going to have. When you wake up in the morning, you have to decide what kind of day you're going to have. Where then is joy to be found? I don't know how many of you uh, have grown in the United Church. Uh, let me just give you a test. Don't panic. Uh, what's the song in Voice United, hymn number 365? <laughs> Rust? No. Jesus loves me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can open the hymn book if you like to confirm the answer. <laughs> Jesus loves me. Let's, let's open the book and see what's in that hymn number 365. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, in his love we shall be strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. It's not about something that is happening in our lives. To be joyful is to make a decision. When you wake up in the morning, I'm going to sing this song all through the day today. And no matter what, I will keep the tone, the first place in my life. Jesus loves me. The key to stay joyful Can you sing that song? As long as we sing that song again and again and again, we can be driven back to the solid rock. And that is distinguishable feature of that joy that is different from happiness. I'm not happy, but I am joyful because Jesus loves me. This joy is not manufactured by pursuit of happiness, but it is a fruit that is produced in us because we decided. This joy is not a sort of inane green that can be raised by a dentist visit or by a good financial report. Although we face head-on difficult things, We are determined to be joyful. All through the day, all kinds of thoughts bombarding our mind each and every day. Sometimes we have to zip that up and we just have to sing that song. Voice Unite hymn number 365, Jesus Loves Me. This couple was traveling down the highway and they saw a sign that says, Helicopter, chopper ride ahead. He said to his wife, I always wanted to ride in one of them, one of those helicopters in my life so badly, please. So they pulled into the place and asked the pilot how much for the ride. The pilot says, $200 each. He scratched his chin and state said, that's a lot of money. I'd like to ride, but that's too much. Feeling a little sorry for the folks, the pilot finally tells them, here is the deal. If you and your wife don't make a sound, I'll take you up for free. But if either one of you says a word, then you have to pay me $400. He says, well, I'll take that deal. So they took off. They just go about straight up to the sky. The pilot then the 
to the power dive, strike down above the tree, just above the trees. Then he turned the craft one way, then the other. At times, most of it just going upside down. He finally landed and said, Wow, I'm very impressed, sir. I'm a man of my word because you never made a word sound. That ride is for free. The husband said, Yep, I almost said something when she fell outside. <laughs> Okay, I lost what I wanted to tell. <laughs> Sometimes in life, we have to be quiet. There are just too many things that are going on. Pandemic, inflation, gas price, real estate market, children, children, children. We can't just Get our mind just straightened up these days. Can you? If you know how, please tell me, because I need solutions. How do we stay joyful? People say Christians were supposed to be the most joyful people around. We are supposed to be the most joyful people around. How do we do that? We have to give up on that, trying to be happy, because it never happens. But we can still be joyful. Why? Because Jesus loves me. And that's what the Bible says, like the word says in the song. In life, like Mary, Mary is having a difficult time right now. Mary is not happy. Mary has so many reasons to be afraid, to be sour, to be grumpy, complaining all over what happens. Her cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy can be seen as a miracle, although she was aged, but she is subject to execution according to their law. So this undertone of desperation leads us to the beginning of this original Christmas story. It's not happy. Actually, all through the gospel, we see this undertone of desperation. Following Jesus involves taking risks in order to love others. They had been excluded, the disciples, the women, the sinners, tax collectors, the mother of Jesus, they are not happy, but they are joyful. Why? Because Jesus loves them. They knew that. When somebody has a joy, authentic and real joy, when they carry that real stuff, it's attractive and we want that. We want that. Happiness is changing. Every time you try to be happy, you try and you change the subject. But joy, joy is fixed. No matter what, joy is fixed. Joy is based on objective reality, not on subjective feelings. It's not about, oh, I feel like, no. Well, there's nothing to be joyful today, right? Well, let me tell you, most of you wake up today and you could see the sky, you could see the snow, there's a, something to be joyful about. Your eyes worked. Heard the birds singing, your ears worked. You have a roof over your head, you have a car to drive, you speak and people can understand you, you have friends, or oh, you have a family. There's a lot to be joyful. 
Long before our little town of Bethlehem, or silent night, long before even the first church choir was created, long before that, I'm talking about 2,000 years ago, Mary sang that song. God will scatter the proud, God will throw down the powerful, and lift up the downtrodden. And listen to what gospel, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, 46 to 55. What is in that? What is the essence of the gospel? What is in there? What's the content of the song? Mary sang that song. Scholars, musicians call it Mary's Magnificat, meaning to magnify. Magnify what? How nothing is terrible, how bad things are, on and on? No. My soul magnifies the Lord. Do you know who the first listener was? Our next carol is Voice United, number four seven. Still, still, still. Voice United in number four seven. Invitation to the offering. Mary offered herself as God's servant and then sang a song celebrating her selection to help bring God's realm on earth. We, we have been chosen to continue to build up the kingdom of God. So we too have reason to celebrate. Let us now offer our tangible signs of gratitude by our gifts. Now today's offering is received.
Dear God, you blessed Mary by making her the mother of your only Son, Jesus Christ. You have blessed us as well with the gift of your Son. And indeed, with the gift of life itself, out of all these blessings, we give you back these offerings this day, knowing that your promises will be fulfilled in anticipation of the coming of the one who brings us peace. Enjoy. Amen. Let us pray the prayers of the people. Loving God, our spirits to do rejoice in all your gracious acts towards us. Most of us, the event we so look forward to, the wonderful and precious gift of your child, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks for the willingness of Mary to believe that the impossible could and would happen. Help us to have a similar faith. Open our hearts and minds to believe that your promises can come to surprising fulfillment. Show us how we can best serve you with mercy and in humility, empowering people to live lives of dignity and worth. As we look at our television screens and read accounts of people throughout the world, 
who are being made powerless because of the greed and violence of others. Remind us of the great possibility of prayer to effect changes for good, to bring down the powerful and to lift up the lonely, to fill those who are hungry and to drive away those who profit by the weakness and ignorance of others. Be with, Be with all, all those who feel that life holds no hope and help them and each of us truly believe in God. That with you, nothing is impossible. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn, our next carol, is Voice United, hymn number 57. Oh, how joyfully, Voice United 57. <laughs> difficult times, but may we, by faith, like Mary did, choose to rather magnify our God, who calls us blessed. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mm -hmm.